Alrighty, Roo, nerds. This is everything I could find on the internet to get you focused up on the contacts G, baby. I'm Dylan, and welcome to Focus Up. Today we're talking the G1, the G2, and the G1 green label. Dill, what's a green label? More on that later. First, I need you to buckle up, because I'm taking you back all the way to 1932. Where contacts began not as a brand, but as a line of cameras under Zeiss Icon. From 1932 to 1936, three cameras bore the Contacts name, the Contacts 1, the Contacts 2, and yep, you guessed it, the Contacts 3, respectively. Now post-war, Contacts starts to get around a little bit. No shame, no shame. At first they were made in the OG Dresden factory, some were being made in the Zeiss Optical factory before everything got moved to Kiev in Ukraine. From there, the Contacts S was introduced to the world. At the same time, Zeiss Icon was still producing cameras over in the US market. And remember, Contax isn't a brand yet. It's still a line of cameras under Zeiss Icon. And even though Zeiss Icon manufactured cameras until 1972, some of them even being revised Contax cameras, none of them ever bore the Contax name. And well, due to more politics and stuff, US, West Germany, and East Germany weren't getting along, and West Germany was essentially forced to partner with a Japanese brand. At first, the partnership was with Pentax, and although brief, it did bring the world to came out. After Pentax, an alliance with Yashica was born. And finally, in 1975, Yashica decided to bring the Contax name back to life. They started with a single lens reflex, the RTS. But once again, in 1983, they were facing financial troubles, and they were purchased by Kosiera, another Japanese manufacturing company. Kosiera kept producing cameras under the Yashica and Contax names, and yep, you guessed it, in 1994, they finally brought us the Contax G1. Boom! We did it. Alrighty, Roo, time to focus up on the Contax G. Let's get going. There's three bodies, G1, G2, and the pesky green label. What's the green label? More on that later. Like I said earlier, we'll get there, okay? Gonna move quick. All three bodies share autofocus, auto exposure, auto exposure lock, auto zooming viewfinders, real PC sync, TTL metering, and flash metering when using their cable L release. Probably goes without saying that the G1 was the first G-series camera. Show up to two frames per second. Wow, that's... Well, it had a single passive autofocus system that they called phase detection. It had shutter speeds of 16 to 1 2000 in auto and 1 second to 1 2000 in manual. It had a max shutter speed of 1 1000 with flash. Reads DX codes, but can be set manually via buttons on the side, as well as drive mode. Manual focus is set by a dial on top. There's a second dial on top for manual exposure. Only came in titanium colorway, and was produced from 1994 to 1996. The G2 came with an improved autofocus. It kept the same phase detection, but also added an active autofocus. It was bumped up to four frames per second. It had a dedicated wheel to select film advanced mode, as well as a dedicated autofocus selector. Shutter speeds jumped from 16 seconds to 1 6,000 in auto and 4 seconds to 1 4,000 in manual, came in titanium and later a black version. Alright, and then the G1 green label, it is literally the exact same as the G1 except it came with a factory firmware update that gave it access to all but one lens in the lineup. A little bit more on that later. Let's move on. There's a total of 7 lenses for the G system. The G1 and the G2 had access to the 16 f8, 28 2.8, 45 f2, and 90 f2.8. The G2 and the green label had access to all of those lenses, plus the 2128 and the 35 f2. There was one zoom lens and it was only available to the G2 series and it was a 35 to 70, 3.5 to 5.6. And real quick here, we just have some factory accessories to go through. The G1 introduced the TLA 140 flash providing TTL auto exposure. The G2 brought the legendary TLA 200 flash. G1 had a date back and the G2 later came with a data back. The cable switch L mentioned earlier, it's a dedicated release cord. There is a GA-1 lens adapter for Contax SLR lenses if you so want to. There was a mirage of cases for both the G1 and the G2, as well as depending on what back you were using with it, as well as what lens you were using with it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much everything. It's pretty much everything you need to know. It was a cool camera. It was a cool camera, it, uh, it really shook the, the industry up. Most people were using screw mount or M mount lenses and contacts came in and was like, hey, we have an entire new range of rangefinder cameras. So, pretty cool. Unfortunately, their digital cameras never caught on with the public and in 2005, the contacts name was put to rest and it's been there ever since, unfortunately. 
Will we ever see another contact camera? Probably not.